All right, we're starting down, starting down here on the mat tonight. So close your eyes. Just take a moment to settle in. Okay, this is a really nice opportunity to just let your back kind of spread out on the mat. Sometimes you might pick your arms and, and low back up and set them down and really mush your shoulder blades and your, the back of your sacrum into the mat. And I like to start out with a little bend in the knees, um, especially if you've been sitting or standing or running around a lot today, your low back might be a little bit tense. So you can neutralize it a little bit with a little bend in your knees, maybe knock them together. A little bend in the elbows I find helps open up all the chest space where we get so tense during the day. So we're thinking really big inhales and really big exhales. And we want to feel big expansion across the chest and the belly and also the back and sides with every inhale. And big contraction on the exhale, everything pulling inward towards your spine. Breathing through your nose as much as you can. Start to cultivate a very long, slow, deep breath, maybe stretching it out a second with each round. And if you've been doing things all day, this is kind of a luxurious moment just to be here now. And you may notice your mind reaching into the past or the future and trying to get your attention about things that it notices that happened or that may happen. But allow that to just be so, but bring yourself back again and again to this moment. What do you notice that is happening right now? How does your breath sound? How does the breath feel in your body? How does your body feel on the floor? Notice all sensations from the tips of your toes, the top of your head. And without trying to change anything at all. Just notice where you hold tension. Notice equally the places that feel strong and healthy and open. Allow your jaw to relax, maybe let it hang open. Let's bring in a little movement here. So if you bend your knees and bring your feet up closer to where your hips are, but then walk them away from each other. So if you have a mat, maybe walk your feet off of your mat and start dropping your knees side to side. So we're making some windshield wipers with our knees. And windshield wipers are a really nice way to start off the practice, especially if we're cold, because they warm up the tissues of the hips, so you feel internal and external rotation in each hip. And your low back is getting a little bit of massage and recalibration, so you might hear some pops. That's okay. So at first, this can be really gentle and almost kind of passive. You're just kind of letting the knees fall. But I want you to start to energize it and press your upper body into the floor. Press your elbows, your hands, and your shoulder blades down. 
And as you energize your upper body down, stabilizing, maybe that allows you to mobilize more in your low back and your hips. And you more actively press the knees down, getting almost a little bit of a stretch across your inner and outer hip. So next time your knees point up, pause, and we'll deepen this twist and activate it a little more. Pick your feet up and put your knees together right over your hips. And then notice if your low back is starting to kind of arch up off the floor right here, pull it down. Okay, really press the low back down into the floor and see if you could keep that low back uh, connecting downward toward the mat and move your knees so they're really right over your hips. Okay, at this point, press your, your whole upper body into the floor. Let your knees hover to one side. Bring them back through center and hover them on the other side. So notice your shoulder blades. If they come up, just press them back down. I want you to be really strong and stable in your upper body here. Keep breathing. I like to inhale to the side and exhale to center. But really, just keep breathing. That's the most important thing. If you want the most effective twist, look away from your knees and feel that twist roll all the way up to the base of your skull. Maybe one more on each side. And next time your knees are back at center, pause. Put your hands on your thighs and connect your low back to the floor again if it got a little archy. And if it's okay with your neck, so no neck injuries, no neck issues today, peel your head and shoulders up off the floor. And I want you to keep a long neck so your chin is not crunching in towards your chest. Imagine you're holding a grapefruit between your chin and your chest. And you'll start to press against your legs here. So immediately you'll feel your abs turn on and your core start to get warm. And that's what we're looking for. So keep pressing right here and breathe. Sometimes when we're working, we forget to breathe. So just remind yourself. Maybe three more long, slow breaths here. Push your legs and your legs push back against you. Two more. Last one. And let that go. Go ahead and drop your head back to the floor. Shake that off for a moment. Maybe you wanna roll your low back around, okay? And we're gonna to start to get a little warmer. So I wanna just remind you one more time to modify at any time, take breaks and uh, Let's have a good time. Okay, don't take it too seriously. Tuck your hands behind your knees. And I wanna rock up and roll down. So rock up and you might push off with your toes and roll yourself down. So take a few more times, make it feel really good on your back. Maybe take your knees wider if that helps. Rock up, roll down. Okay, and now I'm gonna challenge you Next time you come up, balance on your hips. You might use your toes down or not. Rock up and balance. One more time, rock up and balance and pause right here. So in your boat pose, if you need a little extra stability, you can drop your toes. But if that's not necessary today, go ahead and keep them floating. No matter where you are, toes up or down, your spine is really long. So give it some good length. It's gonna be challenging, but you can do it. So roll your shoulders down and lift your heart. I'm going to further challenge you here. So keep in mind, you can drop your toes and you can even put your hands out behind you if you need to. Now here's your next challenge. Think of rolling your low back, just your low back onto the floor. We can call this a half boat, okay, Ardha Navasana. And then think of rolling yourself back up to your boat. So maybe you're using your breath as a tool, inhaling down to your half boat, exhaling up to your full boat, Navasana. So let's take a few more breaths like that. Inhale half, exhale full. Maybe three more, inhale, exhale. 
Two more. This is our last one, okay? Come on down now, hold right here in a half boat. If you need a break, put your hands and feet down, just keep your head and shoulders up, okay? If you're feeling pretty good and you wanna spice it up, extend your legs and hover them just off the floor. You still feel great, keep your low back on the floor and reach your hands for the back of the room. Three long, slow breaths, my friends. This is challenging. Two more. Getting your core warm. Strengthening the front body. One more beautiful breath. As you exhale, roll up to your last boat and drop your feet in front. Nice work. I'll meet you on hands and knees. So go ahead and point your knees out to one side and we can flip it over. Hands and knees. All right, let's get the front and back body a little bit more warm and a little bit more mobility in the spine. So cat cows, grip the mat here, pull your elbows in slightly. And as you inhale, think of pulling your heart between your arms. I want you to lift your belly button as you do that. As you exhale, push the floor away very hard and look at your belly button. This is a nice time to shake your head and let your neck just hang. So let's take a few more cat cows, please. Inhaling heart forward. Exhaling, push the floor. Maybe close your eyes. I want you to make this so fluid that you're not really sure where one of the movements begins and the other ends. And maybe you mix in some kind of weird, snaky side to side movements. I feel a lot of freedom in your spine here. Anything that feels stuck, I want you to open it up right now in your spine. In your rib cage, between your shoulders, your throat. And next time you pull your heart up to a cow pose, okay, that arched spine. Let's take a full breath here. So in and out, lift the belly button. One more breath in. And then exhale, push the floor away, rounded spine, cat pose, hold here, full breath in and out. Look at your belly button. And then bring it on back to a flat back. Tuck your toes and lift your hips. We're coming up and back to a downward facing dog. So come on back. Ah, here we are in our first downward facing dog of the practice. So we're not putting any pressure on ourselves to make this perfect by any means. Walk it out, make it kind of weird. We want to think of the backs of the calves kind of opening up. Notice tension there. Notice the hamstrings. And then let's roll the shoulders. Get some good, good, big movement in there. And roll the other way. And then I like to kind of open up the hands and feet here. Try this, try coming up on just your fingertips, all the fingertips of both hands and suction cupping the center of your palm up away from the mat. And you might even try combining that with one foot flipping over on the top of your foot. You can kind of try just one at a time maybe. Or if you're feeling kind of spicy today, you try two at a time. So the more we wake up our hands and feet, the better for our practice. And as you're ready, we can bring everything back to some sort of normal and we'll start to move. So I'm gonna take us through a few little warming rounds of vinyasas. Modify if you need to, okay, take that break. Inhaling here, move your heart forward and find a plank posture. So a plank can always mean your knees are down or up. It's really your choice. With your exhale, bend your knees, hover them just off the mat. Bring your hips as close to your heels as you can and look at your hands. We'll call this a down dog squat, okay? Inhale back to your plank, knees up or down. And with your exhale, walk to your hands. Take a nice fold here. You might even bend your knees generously. <sighs> Let your upper body kind of hang. On your inhale, could we roll it up? Push into your heels, please. Stack yourself up. 
Reach nice and tall. Maybe even lift your heart for a teeny tiny back bend. And with your exhale, drop into a chair squat. You're thinking of sitting back, tucking your tailbone and lifting your heart. Now hold here, listen carefully. Inhale and reach your right hand behind you. Pull back your left knee at the same time so it doesn't move forward. Exhale back to your chair squat, drop a little lower. Other side, same thing. Inhale, left hand reaches behind you. Look at it and pull your right knee back. Exhale, drop a little further back to your chair squat. Come up to standing on your inhale. Maybe lift your heart, a tiny back bend here. And exhale, fold all the way back down. You can bend your knees, hinge at your hips, and hang. On your inhale, come halfway up. Think of unrolling your spine to look forward, like a little arch in your spine. Then with your exhale, fold really deeply. You can even bend your knees and hug your legs. Let your head hang. Palms are down. Inhaling here, step it back to a plank. With your exhale, bend your knees, wag your tail in the air, okay? Pull your elbows in. Could you drop your knees, chest, and chin to the floor or just hover them? Your choice. Inhale here, pull your heart forward and find a little cobra shape, okay? Your tailbone is trying to go down and your heart is trying to go up. Think of pulling on the mat. With your exhale here, tuck your toes and I'll meet you back in a downward facing dog. And let's take some breath here. So we're gonna do that same little sequence two more times. I like to do things in threes. We might go a little slight bit faster because it'll be more predictable now. And I just want you to think of moving all your joints and warming up. You don't have to crank it to 100%, okay? All right, just warming things up. Let's do that again. So here we go, inhaling, heart moves forward to a plank with or without your knees. And exhale, bend your knees, down dog squat, hover knees, look at your hands. Inhale back to your plank and exhale to your hands. You can step and fold. Coming up on your inhale, roll yourself up, tiny back bend up top. Exhale down into your chair squat. Okay, we're gonna twist like we did last time. Inhale, right hand back, left knee moves back too so it doesn't get out of line. Exhale back to your chair squat, drop a little lower. On the other side, inhale, left hand back, right knee back. Exhale back to your chair squat, drop a little lower. Inhale all the way up to stand, arch your spine maybe a little bit. And exhale, fold it. Halfway up for your inhale, unroll yourself to look forward. And big exhale here all the way down, hug your legs. Palms are down, inhale to your plank. Exhale, knees, chest and chin, wag your tail, look forward. You can hover if for more challenge or come all the way down for less. Inhale for your, up, your cobra, tailbone down, heart moves up, pull on the mat, okay? And exhale, downward facing dog. Take some breaths here. Let all that just roll off your back. Shake it off, whatever happened. Notice warmth building in your body. Check out your breath rate and your heart rate here. It's nice to move and then be still and somewhere find a nice balance in there. Can we do that one more time? Inhaling here, heart moves forward, plank. Exhale, bend your knees, little down dog squat. We'll go a little faster now. Inhale for plank. Exhale to your hands, fold. Inhale, roll it up, little back bend. Exhale to your chair. Inhale, right arm reaches back. Exhale, chair, sit lower. Inhale, left arm reaches back. Exhale to your chair, sit lower. Inhale to stand, tiny back bend. Exhale to fold. Halfway up, inhale. 
Big fall to exhale. Palms are down, inhale to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin, hover or not. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take five or six breaths here, yogis. Start to push the mat with your hands. We're a little warmer now. Push the feet down. Think of lifting your kneecaps. And maybe if you walk your fingers an inch or two forward, you can get that much longer in your spine. And that feel nice. Notice your breath. All right, we're going to keep moving here. Inhaling here. Get the right leg up and out behind you. Exhale here, draw the right knee towards your right elbow. How close can you get? Could you slide it a little closer up towards your armpit? Inhale, send the right leg up and out behind. Exhale, right knee to left elbow. Okay, could you slide it a little closer up to your armpit? Inhale, send the leg back. Mm, exhale, drop the right foot between your hands. Boom, drop the back knee, okay, up on your fingertips. Inhale, arch your heart forward, just like we're doing a cow pose. And exhale, pull your hips back, point your right toes at your nose and round your spine like we're doing a cat pose. <laughs> Let's do that again. Back to your little lunge, low lunge. Inhale, heart rolls up and forward. Exhale, roll it back for a cat shape. One more time, inhale, heart up. Exhale, heart back. Nice, last time, inhaling up to your lunge, tuck your toes here and lift the back knee, the back toes tuck, sorry, lift the back knee and come on up to a crescent lunge and we'll take a few breaths here. Push the floor down with your legs and we'll hang out right here. So if you need a break, you can drop the back knee. So that's really no problem at all. Drop that back knee. But if you're enjoying this challenge, I want you to press down into your leg bones. So think of your leg bones really resisting the floor, but your muscles pulling inward. So your stability allows more mobility up top. Maybe join your fingers and point your point your fingers at the back of the room with some nice heat build here. One more big breath in. And exhale, all hands down under your shoulders inside that front foot, the right foot, and I'll meet you back in a down dog. Mm, walk it out, let all that shake off. And we'll take a little vinyasa in between. So you're welcome to skip the vinyasa and just take a break if you'd prefer to do that. Here goes. Inhaling, heart moves forward to plank. Check it out. Exhale, you can hop or step to your hands and fold. Roll it up on your inhale, little tiny back bend here. Exhale, drop into your chair squat. Listen carefully. Inhale right here. Exhale, drop a little lower. See if you could put your hips down level with your knees. Inhale to stand, lift your heart, back bend. And exhale, fold. Halfway up, inhale. Big fold on your exhale. Okay, listen up. Hands down, hop or step back to plank on your inhale. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, cobra, pulling your heart forward. If you want to hover your legs off the floor for an up dog, go for it. Okay, you're still pulling that heart up. And exhale, roll it back to a downward facing dog. Take five or six breaths here, yogis. Close your eyes. Notice how you feel. Okay, notice that push forward of the hands and the pull back of the feet. Try to take up as much space as you can in this posture. Continue to expand outward. Pulling the elbows inward, lifting the kneecaps. Could you spin your heels so that you can't see them anymore? Okay. These are all little cues that you'll internalize, but they always are worth going over. <laughs> okay. We're going to do the other side. Are you ready? Here goes. Inhaling left leg up and out behind you. Exhaling here, left knee to left elbow. Come close as you can, and then could you bring it up closer to your left armpit? 
Inhale, left leg up and out behind. Exhale, left knee to right elbow. Could you scoop it up to the armpit maybe? Inhale, send it out behind. Exhale, this time drop the left foot between your hands. We're dropping the back knee up on your fingertips. Here's a little low lunge. So just like a cat-cow flow, inhaling, pull your heart up, arching like a cow back. Exhale, pull the hips back, point the left toes at your nose and round like a cat pose back. Two more times just like that, my friends. Inhaling, cow back. Exhaling, cat back. Okay, feel the back of the left leg opening up one more time. Inhale. And exhale. Okay, inhaling back to that low lunge, we'll immediately transition to a crescent lunge. Tuck in the right toes, hovering the right knee, arms up, crescent lunge. And we'll take some time here. So if this is a little too much for your vibe right now, just drop the right knee. You're still here, okay? Nothing's really changed. So continue to push into your strong legs. I want you to really use the strength of your legs to push down into your bones and pull up into your muscles. So the muscles are pulling in, the bones are pulling, are pushing down. And we think of reaching up and out from that strength. Maybe point your pointer fingers at something behind you. And maybe one more big breath right here. And a big exhale, letting it go. Drop your hands under your shoulders. Back to down dog. So I'll take us through another little vinyasa just to clear that out, okay? Feel free to skip and take a break. Inhaling here is your plank. Exhale, hop or step to your hands and fold. Roll it up as you inhale. Sit down into your chair squat as you exhale. Hang here with me for a full breath in. Drop all the way into it for an exhale. See if you can bring your hips level with your knees. <sighs> Inhale all the way up to a little back bend. And exhale all the way down to your fold. Roll halfway up on your inhale, looking forward, little arch in your spine. And make a big deep fold on your exhale, hug your legs. Palms are down. Hop or step it back to plank as you inhale. And exhale, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, cobra or up dog, your choice. Exhale, downward facing dog. Walk it out here, yogi. Shake it out. Five or six breaths, please, in your down dog. So I like to close eyes here, just kind of feel all the sensation that your practice has stirred up, swirling around in your body. Make little adjustments to your down dog. Could you lengthen your belly? Could you lift your tailbone a little higher? Could you pull the elbows closer? Could you suction cup the center of your palm upward and the center of each arch? Could you kind of suction your feet up? These are all little energetic tools and tricks we can play around with. But as always, just have fun with it and experiment. All right, my friends, we're gonna get a little more low key. So from here, walk your feet all the way to your hands. And you might put a really comfortable bend in your knees here, especially if you're feeling kind of, you're kind of hanging like this. Just take the pressure off, bend your knees and come down. And if you have blocks that you like, or even a chair, just kind of something, but put your hands on something, okay? You can do fingertips too, that's fine. But I just don't want your upper body hanging. And look at your legs. We're gonna play around with a little bit of a twisty fold a foldy twist. So if you pick up your left foot and you put it on the other side of your right foot, then when you look at your ankles, your left uh, ankle is crossed in front of your right. And then you can walk your hands out to the left. So hands are walking out to the left. All the fingers are now pointing at the left side of the mat. And something that's important here is that we wanna have our fingertips at least on the floor. So you might need to put extra bend in your knees. And you know what? That is totally fine. 
no problem at all. Take a moment, decide how you feel about this. And if you feel pretty comfortable and you want to explore further, continue walking your fingers so that all the fingers are pointing at the back of the mat. And breathe. Let your head hang. Are you instinctively trying to hold your head up right now? Okay, laugh at yourself if you are and just let it hang. It's okay, it's safe. <laughs> Do you feel all this space opening up in your right side? Okay, how would it feel if you kind of tried to move your right hip a little closer to the back of the mat right now? One more big breath in here. And bring it back to center. We're just gonna switch sides, that is all. So put the left foot back under the left hip. And now the right foot can cross over and around to the other side of the left. Okay, you might need to put a little extra bend in your knees here, that's not a problem. Just try to put at least your fingertips on something. Palms are great too. Decide how you feel about this. This might actually be enough. You might just hang right here. You don't have to keep going. But if you wanna explore, fingers pointing to the right, let your head hang. Take at least a breath or two before you keep going. Things work better if we take our time. <laughs> okay, we're gonna maybe point the fingers all the way to the back of the mat. Let your head hang. What a great stretch across the left side of the body. Now, what if you moved your left hip a little closer to the back of the mat here? One more big breath to enjoy here. And roll it back around to center. Okay, from here, take your feet back underneath your hips and then let's walk them out away from each other. So if you have a mat, then maybe take your feet as wide as your mat is. Okay, if you don't have a mat, just imagine what that would be. And then drop your hips down. So I'm gonna have you take a moment here to decide where you want your hips to be. So for some of us, it's really uncomfortable to drop the hips and we'd rather just stay with the elbows on the knees and that's pretty good. So go ahead and hang out right there because we don't wanna be uncomfortable. There's no reason to suffer. But if it's not uncomfortable for you to drop your hips, come on down. And I'm gonna to turn to face you a little bit more here so we can you can see where I'm going with this. So if your palms come together and that's feeling okay for you, put them together and then stick your elbows inside your knees. And then you're gonna bring your elbows as far apart as you can by pushing your palms together and widen the distance between your knees. And hopefully you feel a nice opening on the insides of your thighs. So I wanna take this to um, a little bit more intense of an opening and we're gonna to start to activate our legs. So you might have instinctively just kind of sunk into this and been passive, that's not a problem. But I want you to make this a really active squat now and push into your leg bones. So your heels are pushing down. And as your leg bones push down, that's right, your leg muscles are pulling in towards your hips. Maybe close your eyes, lengthen your spine to the best of your ability. And maybe you would like to put your thumbs against your sternum and try to find your heartbeat. Yep, still there. That's good. Okay, one more big breath here in your squat and then I'm gonna give you some options to play around with. You can stay here or you can explore further. So maybe you'd like to take your right arm around the front inside of your right leg. Okay, you can just put the right hand on the floor somewhere out there to the right. Maybe stay here. You can put the left hand down if you like, or you can reach the left hand up. What a cool twisty shape. Okay, keep resisting the floor with your legs. Don't stop with the active legs. Stay here or wrap the right hand around the back of your right leg and tickle your back. Perhaps the left hand goes looking for the right. They can join each other and they can squeeze that right leg into your armpit. So you're going to start to look up over your left shoulder. Breathe. Keep resisting the floor. One more breath. 
and transition through center. Let's explore the other side. It could be totally, totally different. So left arm hooks around. You can think shoulder by knee, left shoulder by your left knee, left hand on the floor somewhere, right hand up. Okay, I want you to feel a nice twist and expansion across your right side. Continue to resist the floor. Maybe the left hand hooks behind. Maybe the right hand does too. Squeeze that leg, push down into your legs. Look up over the right shoulder. Okay, this might bring up some intense feelings in your hips. That's okay. You can always back out if you need to. As you're ready, bring it back through center. Drop your hands in front. Okay, here's our reward for all our hard work in the hips. Slowly lift your hips, take your time. Slowly push the floor away. Walk your feet back in toward each other. And we might finish off this by just holding your calves very tenderly with one in each hand and hugging your legs towards you. Let your head hang. If you tuck your chin a little bit, could that expand the space at the base of your skull that much more? One more breath here in your fold. Feel free to hug yourself a little tighter. And then as you're ready, beautiful people, hands on the floor, bend your knees, come to a seat. Extend your legs here and let's challenge ourselves. Okay, I wanna end with this final challenge to roll down as slowly as possible. So maybe take five or six breaths to come down. Point your tailbone at your toes so your spine is now rounded and see if you could put down one vertebra at a time. So super controlled and slow, keep breathing. When you finally land, take a moment, feel your practice, <laughs> all the energy that you stirred up. Okay, and we spent kind of a long time folding forward, and so I want to end with one really nice little back bend. Okay, so if you face your palms up, and then you can just pick up your right glute and grab it with your right hand, and then sit down on it. Do the same with your left. Pick it up, grab your left glute with your left hand, put it down. Now you're grabbing both your glutes and your elbows are on the floor. You feel that. So what happens if you push down into your elbows? You feel how your chest lifts. So play around with that feeling and then looking straight up at the ceiling, uh, maybe with a little bend in your knees if you like. I kind of like how it makes the low back feel, but it's really up to you. Press into your elbows and see if you can scoot them underneath you. So you've got this nice lifted upper body here. Okay, maybe you pull your chin towards your chest so it has a nice tuck in it and let your head fall. Big breath. So your chest is moving up. Your shoulder blades are kind of scooping it upward. You definitely have a tuck in your chin so your throat is not blasting up into the ceiling. So promise me you'll tuck that chin. And let's do one more big breath in here. Nice open heart, open chest, open throat and shoulders. Mm, come down really slowly, pulling the chin back into your chest. You can roll your spine back to the floor. Free your hands. And relax completely onto the floor. So this is where we'll end our practice today in Shavasana. It's super important to rest here and let go of all control and let your body just assimilate and integrate 
all of the experiences it just had during your practice. Let your breath just be perfectly natural. You're not controlling it. Let your jaw hang slack. Let all effort drain out of your body. Complete surrender here. Your face is relaxed, especially your jaw. Your eyeballs and your eye sockets and your forehead are relaxed. Your ears. And devote your awareness just to being here now, right here, nowhere else to be. Notice everything, every little sensation in your body. Notice the clock ticking, your roommates moving around, the way the mat feels on your back. Notice how your fingers feel how your nose feels. You cultivate a moment of bliss right here, right now. And this is where I will leave you tonight. So please keep resting like this for as long as you can. Thank you so much for joining me.